So you had your screening here this morning. Yeah. So tell me about how that went. It went great. You know, it's funny because I have this room, like, the, the film festival component of Comic-Con is, like, definitely separated and sort of its own little thing and there's so much going on that I don't think it gets a whole lot of hype. Uh -huh. So they have this room with like 300 chairs and like definitely not full. Uh, but it was fun. Like it was exactly what we had hoped which is that this is our audience. You know like we made the film basically for you know the geek community or like the, the closeted geek community and uh, you know so we have like Dungeons and Dragons references in the film and, and they got it and it was really fun to hear them laugh. Yeah, it seems like a perfect fit for, yeah. for it. I haven't seen it. I want to. Uh, um, how do you, myself and others that want to see it see it? Uh, right now, festivals. I mean, we're just going to, because we really want to try and get it on the big screen as much as possible because, you know, we shot it. We shot it with a lot of production value and we tried to, you know, we wanted it to be on the big screen. Um, so. Right now, we're sort of aiming for that as much as possible. We're going to be playing at Dragon Con. We're going to be playing um, in Rhode Island. Uh, we're playing Fantasia next week. So we're just sort of taking it around to festivals. Um, and then I think maybe in like, I don't know, after we've sort of done them all, mm -hmm. which will be after a full year of playing around, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully put it online, find some sort of distribution. You know, it'd be nice to. The, it's it's kind of tough to just throw a film online. It seems like you might just get lost in the shuffle, and we kind of want to find a way to you know if we if we don't associate ourselves with a certain site or a certain film company, we have to figure out like what the best way to do it and sort of get the most out of it so people can enjoy it, but also so that you know within the film industry it can be sort of recognized as a viable thing because short films you know they're still they they occupy this no man's land like at festivals they're big but then people don't watch them that much online yet like you know it's I don't know I guess you can download some from iTunes but only certain short films I don't know I'm still trying to figure it out it seems like the industry is still trying to figure itself out but we'll get it out there in some way because a lot of people do want to see it you know so, so what was the timeline from this project from script to filming to you know starting to do the promotion yeah. it was Shiloh and I were writing another script that we were really struggling with and we were miserable and um, it was somebody else's idea that we were writing and we in like a moment of inspiration we're like, wait a minute, we should write this story based on a real experience that we had. Mm -hmm. And we were like, boom. And we busted out Dungeon Master in like a day and a half of writing. And then it was just calling whoever we knew and getting it, making it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were shooting maybe a month later. We shot for three days. Um, and then... Uh, Post-production took a long time because I ended up taking a break to go do a play in Australia for like three months. So everything sort of got put on hold, it was just too bad. Uh, so post-production ended up taking like six months. If you actually added up the time, it probably was about three weeks of post-production. Um, and uh, yeah, and then, you know, started submitting to film festivals and playing around. Yeah. Um, do you consider yourself to be a nerd? Definitely. Um, I'm, you know, Shallow and I, we, it's about people that used to play D&D when they were kids who stopped and sort of rediscover it later, and that's exactly the way we've always been. Um, so, yeah, I'm not like, it's funny, you know, you have different, there's so many different subcategories of nerd and geek, but I'm definitely more of a literary nerd, like a book nerd. I'm obsessed, and... Uh, you know, I can geek out on that for days and hours, um, but yeah, uh, I don't play d and regularly anymore. We still play Magic the Gathering, uh, the card game, totally into that. Uh, I'm not very good at it though, like, so I'm only, I only go so far, um, and then like, I play video games, but I'm not, again, I'm not like totally totally into it so it's always funny because like I think in certain you know in certain circles I feel very geeky and nerdy and then you come to like comic-con you're like oh no I don't know anything about any of this stuff right. like I'm so just scratching the surface of whatever I'm into you know so I don't know I guess it depends on who I'm talking to you know <laughs> now coming to this do you want to dress up in the future if you did what would you dress up as if you saw yourself doing that ever? Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm not like a big costume guy. Let's see. I could. Um, no, no. Shiloh always dresses up as a pirate. Um, so, I, and I could easily go as a pirate, like a co-pirate. Uh, I don't know. You know, the last time I dressed up for something was like Renfair when I was a teenager. Um, 
I don't know. What would I dress up for Comic Con as? That's a good question. There was one Halloween where I was the dude from Big Lebowski because I actually got a hold of the same sweater, you know, and that was awesome. That was nice. like one of my favorite. And I feel like Comic Con would embrace that. That would that would fit in. But maybe that's too overdone. I feel like the whole Lebowski thing I'm sick of hearing about. So I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> in Dragon Con, um, in just I guess about a little over a month. Um, I'm from Atlanta, so yeah. that's a, a big right. deal. And the costumes there, I think, are a little bit more impressive. That's what I've heard. So. That's what I've heard. And I've also heard that the film festival is sort of better there. Like, it's a bigger, more thing. So, yeah. we're, we're playing there. I'm so excited. I actually saw you walking around uh, the picture okay, floor yesterday, and my friend who was with me freaked out. And we took a picture with, or she took a picture with you. All right. Um, is that happening to you a lot? Not a whole lot, no. No. I mean... You know, the show's been off the air. Well, I guess it's still airing in the mornings in, like, ABC Family. But, like, yeah, Boy Meets World is sort of, like... It, it, the last couple of years, it has finally, like, died down in the sort of public consciousness. Because, like, there was a period when the show ended in 2000. It started airing on the Disney Channel all the time, like, every day. And I was going to school in New York at the time. And, you know, sort of not really acting, like, just going to college. And I would get stopped all the time like on the subway because kids were sort of a new generation of kids were discovering it like at that yeah. time and I thought the show was over I'm like oh, okay this is gonna eventually die down but it ran for like four more years on the Disney Channel so that sort of kept it alive and I kept getting recognized everywhere um, but no now that it's been off the Disney Channel and off of ABC Family except I think now like I said in the mornings like it's seven in the morning it plays uh, it doesn't happen that often um, plus I think I've finally you know starting to look a little older <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, coming off of that, did you were you really careful with the decisions you made as far as what you were going to do to kind of push yourself away from that, or how did that work? It wasn't really conscious, no. I never, like, I mean, the big departure that ended up happening was doing Cabin Fever, you know, the horror film, and that was, um, that was, that wasn't really calculating, that was just sort of, it happened, you know, it was an audition that I took, because uh, I thought the script was hysterical and funny and awesome, and and I met with Eli Roth, the director, and he was great. We just clicked, and it was like, okay, this is this is a, a film I want to be a part of. And I'd always loved horror films, so it just sort of made sense to me. Right. Um, but I think as far as, you know, it's, it's one of those things, like, the public perception of you sometimes is completely out of step with your own perception of yourself, and that was one of those examples of, like, well, I've always loved horror films, so why not just do one? But, of course, as far as the world knew, I was, like, still the squeaky clean, like, child you know, on the sitcom. Right. So that context, I think, for some people was like, what, now he's in a horror film? But like in my life, it just made sense, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I was never conscious, but it definitely like, what was conscious was that I wanted to have more life experiences that were not just about acting. So that's why I went to college and studied literature, didn't go to film school, like, you know, I've done other things. Mm -hmm. And that's always been a conscious effort to like, okay. make sure my life doesn't, shrink into, you know, the next acting gig. Um, right. Because I just never, I, uh, even from a really young age, I knew that uh, that wasn't going to be my whole life, you know, that I was going to have other interests and other things. And, and I'm glad, like, it's now, you know, moving into writing and directing. I think if I had stayed just acting all my life, I, I don't know, you sort of limit yourself, you know. Um, now I can sort of take a lot of the experiences I got from acting, but channel them into to tell stories about some of the other things that I'm interested in. Of course, me growing up, TJF was a huge part of my life, so I have to ask what was a huge part of your childhood that you look back on and rem reminisce about, like others reminisce of Boy Meets World? Uh, the Wonder Years. Wonder Years. Yeah. Definitely. And that's why it was so cool, like, when I got Boy Meets World, to be working with Fred's, you know, younger brother, and like, and then Fred ended up directing a couple episodes of Boy Meets World, and he was in one, you know, like, and, you know, it's just cool. Like, it, in a way, it was funny that um, Boy Meets World ended up sort of taking up the mantle of, you know, it's a very different show. I mean, Wonder Years is much more of a drama and sort of serious, and, but as far as an as a show that kids could relate to and identify with as part of their childhood, like, yeah, for me it was The Wonder Years, and so, you know, it's funny that it ended up being similar. It worked out similar. for it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, what are your favorite TV shows now? Um, I've never been, like, a huge TV guy, but I'm, I'm, I'm now, I'm, I'm, like, three years behind, but I'm getting into Breaking Bad, which is amazing. Um, I, uh, let's see. 
I do watch Modern Family. I think that it's that's the sort of great sitcom that's out there right now. Like, you know, that's they they found a way to make like the Office style thing work uh, in a new way. Um, but yeah, I tend to I tend to focus on the the, the the weirder television, you know, the HBO shows, the Showtime stuff. I, I love that. Game of Thrones is unbelievable. What's uh, what's next for you in terms of directing and writing? You got any projects coming up? Yeah, well, we we, made, we already made another short film. It's called Method, and we premiered that at the Palm Springs uh, Short Fest uh, last month. So now you know we're also going to be going to festivals with that. But the real goal is to to stop making shorts and make a to grow up and make a real feature. Like, you know, so we just need to find the money or the company that's willing to give us the money. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a lot of times that's why you make shorts is so you can get your, your work out there and start attracting interest. Um, and it's happening. Like, that's, you know, that's what's nice is that because we've been playing festivals and winning awards and doing well, um, you know, we've been able to get good representation as directors and writers and you know so now we'll start taking all those meetings and try and convince Hollywood that uh, we can actually do something that will make them love you.